thank you so much for joining us today as we talk about getting out the vote. And, you know, we could talk about the how to get out the vote, but all you got to do is go to the National Council website and check out our Get Out the Vote guide, and you'll learn all about that. I thought today I really wanted to talk more about why we in behavioral health should be focused on getting out of the vote. And as I thought about this, you know, fresh in my mind is recovery month and what we were just celebrating about people can and do recover that it's the expectation, not the exception. It just seems so obvious to me that voting is a huge part of that. So, hey, to have this conversation with me today, I'm so lucky to be joined by my colleagues and friend, Tom Hill, who is our senior advisor for substance use disorder issues here at the National Council and our awesome member of our National Council Board of Directors, Vitka Eisen, who's the president and CEO of Health Right 360 in San Francisco. So Tom, am I dreaming or do you, do you agree, do you think that voting is really important part of recovery? So Chuck and Vitka, when we were talking the other day, remember I was telling you about uh, the year 1972? Uh, well, that was the year I turned 18, and it was also the year that they, they changed the voting age to 18. And I was so excited to be engaged uh, in a political process. I was a young progressive. I don't think I used that word at the time. I probably used the word radical at the time, mm -hmm. uh, but I voted for McGovern, and that was a huge, huge thing. Uh, well, if you know history, you know that McGovern lost big time to Nixon that year. Huge landslide election. Uh, but then it was followed shortly by Nixon's impeachment uh, after Watergate. And so, you know, I got so cynical and so um, just just disgruntled with, with government politics. Um, and as that, that sort of, as that escalated, so did my drug and alcohol use. And so, um, I, you know, I, for the next 20 years, um, my cynicism just got deeper and deeper. And I was engaged really in a nightlife underworld of Manhattan. And I had very little consideration or care or connection with wholesome daytime activities. Um, and, and I just didn't care much. And so, you know, when I got into recovery in 1992, my whole orientation to the world changed and it changed really quickly. And I was at a pride rally that summer and there was a, um, there was a voter registration table and I walked up and I found myself registering to vote. And I was like, wow, this is really something. So I participated in that presidential election in 1992, which was a big election for me. And that was the beginning that sparked something in me. And, um, you know, it's like, I'd never been a joiner. I hadn't been a joiner in 20 years. But after that, I then became like a, a volunteer uh, poll worker. And then I worked as a field organizer on a city council, a grassroots city council campaign, a really important campaign in lower Manhattan, um, uh, like in 1997. And so I just slowly became more and more engaged. And, you know, I've been around the block a few times and I've met a lot of people in recovery and I've seen that spark happen and I've seen that spark ignite into a flame. And so people may start with voting. They may start with going to their PTA meeting or neighborhood block association, but they get involved in civic engagement because as they learn to change their world, they change the, the whole world around them and they become advocates. And it's a really exciting thing to witness when somebody has that spark and the, there's all the conditions that make an advocate out of them. And voting is definitely a part of that process. Great. That's so cool to hear your uh, journey, Tom. Thanks so much for sharing that. And like, wow, the two things that really caught my attention was not just about voting, but about activism, because, right, elections have consequences. And, you know, I guess the other thing that there really struck me, right, is um, we say when we talk about recovery, right, it's about people fully engaging in mm -hmm. their lives and in their communities. Vika, does that resonate with you, too? Oh, totally. So, um you know, a lot of times we say in our organization, we do lots of substance use treatment uh, throughout the state of California. I'm also a former drug user. And a lot of times we talk about um, connection as the antidote to despair from drug use. So we want people like every part of what we do is about connecting people, creating community around them, connecting to a support network. But a part of that is also building a sense of agency. 
right? Because you feel connected and then you have an ability to shape your world, right? In the beginning and in, in people's early recovery, often they feel um, sort of disempowered because sometimes like the drug life, uh, living that life, being on the streets, um, it, you know, while you have no power, it gives a person some kind of a sense of, of power because they're like ripping and running and they're doing what they got to do. So take that away. There's a sense of like disconnection. Where do I go from here? So part of recovery is really, again, building a sense of agency that people are a part of something. And a part of sense of agency is voting, right? Yeah. So yeah. And voting means that you do get to shape your world. I was really struck by Tom talking about the cynicism, right? And that cynicism really does underlie for many people struggling with substance use, that cynicism really underlies that. And so really helping people to move beyond that and feeling like I can, you know, I can shape my world. The other thing is that a lot of the work that we do is, is justice oriented, right? And so, so many of the people we work with have been disenfranchised because they have been incarcerated, right? So they've been incarcerated, they couldn't vote. Uh, in California, um, which is where we're located in California, you can't vote when you're on parole. Um, and so, and some people have these, you know, long parole tales, they might be on parole for three years. And so it's really important to connect with people and make sure at the point of which they can vote that they get registered and that they vote. Because it really is about kind of reclaiming your part of, uh, of society. Uh, and this, I mean, we, I think we all know that the disenfranchisement of voters has disproportionately affected um, black communities. And so we see that as like a core issue is not just to recovery, but to kind of people's power really. So, um, and the other thing, I, you know, so we, we do a message every year to all the staff. I send out a message uh, and, and each year we've gotten better and better at it. And we, you know, we send out a message about um, uh, it's, you have a right to shape your world. Uh, and, um, and I also say that people died for the right to vote, which I never lose track of that. I like never lose, uh, like we encourage people to vote in like primary elections, kind of the, the off season, the ones that happen in like May and June, which re really try to get people out to vote and realize that uh, this is no small thing, right? That, that you have a sense of hope and power and agency. And, and, and as you said, elections have consequences. So we should be a part of that, that conversation. And I think that the, that, um, Finally, lots of states, uh, I think there's like half the states have ballot initiatives that are like direct referendums or directly from the voters. And so those things really very directly shape people's lives, right? So yeah. uh, some states you vote, you're voting for a legislator who's then gonna make policy at the state house. But in many states, those things go to the, to the voters. And so you can, you can vote on policies that will change the, you know, people's rights and power in the, in this state. So an example in California, there is a proposition on the ballot to allow people on parole to register to vote. So like we have the power as voters to do that. Um, so anyway, we just see that as it's just part of the whole package of like building people's um, connection to community and their sense of, you know, self power and agency. Well, that, that is so, what a great way to say that, Vitka, you know, and uh, you think about, you know, what's really struck me when you were just talking is, you know, that uh, elections at all levels have consequences, mm -hmm. right, because it affects uh, what, what kind of resources are available for services, for outreach, for housing uh, at the local, state, mm -hmm. and federal level, uh, what kind of country are we going to be? I'm just so grateful to your organization and to other national council member organizations that help organize, get out the vote. And I mean, the two words that you said also that just really resonated, we were both were agency and hope, right? Those are so important for uh, helping people, for all of us, not even just people in recovery, right? For all of us uh, to feel like what we do makes a difference. So I know that, uh, Folks can go to the National Council website, check out our Get Out the Vote uh, resources. Vitka, you want to plug your stuff? Yeah, Doug, we created, so I just want folks to know that there's no prohibition uh, for nonprofits to engage in voter registration uh, and actively in helping people make a plan to vote. Um, and so there's no prohibition for, for doing that. And in fact, there's no prohibition for, ad, for doing advocacy work around issues that are important. There is obviously a prohibition against um, par partisanship and, and um, 
and candidates. So we we're really careful about that. We want to we respect the right. Listen, our clients may vote. They may vote. They may vote against their interests. It's their right to do that. We respect their right to do that. Um, but we also put out a voter guide. Let me see if you can see it. Uh, we put out a voter guide, and the voter guide. Uh, it's, we, we sent it out to staff and then the voter guide has, makes it really easy for people to click the links to register to vote. And uh, it tells them the deadlines by which they have to do that. Uh, and we also actually, this year, we decided to put out some recommendations around some of the ballot initiatives um, because in California, I don't, in California, your ballot book is quite large and it's really complicated. It's not easy to read. It'll have like, this is the pro and this is the con and they have lots of double negatives and it's very confusing. And so we, uh, we weighed in on initiatives that we thought directly affected the people that we serve uh, and then sent out our recommendations. There's no, no, there's no requirement that people vote that way, but- yeah. Um, we got like lots of positive feedback from staff and clients that it was really helpful to them because the book is can be overwhelming. Um, and then where they can go to get more information, we've had workshops, not on the initiatives, but on voting and, you know, what to do if you have, if you're challenged at polls, all of those kinds of things. And I think, again, I, like, I think that's just part of our responsibility is creating healthy communities, is making sure that we, uh, that the people we serve, you know, have that have a path towards participation. You hey know, Tom, you wanted, you wanted to talk about uh, something that's happening this weekend too, didn't you? Yeah, I will. I, I just wanted to say one thing in, in regards to what Vic has said is that, you know, it doesn't matter who or what you vote for. It matters that you vote. Mm -hmm. and, and we always encourage people to make informed decisions around voting. So make sure that, that the person or initiative you're voting for is in your best interest. And do a little research and talk to people, and you know, it's like that's that's a part of engagement also. So, uh, the other thing I learned was, you know, if you uh, if you register for a party, you can then you're eligible to vote in the primaries, which is often an even more important election locally than the larger election. So, just a little tip there. But Chuck, you wanted me to talk to talk about uh, the rally to vote. Uh, recovery uh, 2020. It's a virtual rally. It'll be on Sunday, November 1st. So it's not this Sunday. It's a week from this Sunday. It's at 4 p.m. Eastern time. It's hosted by Faces and Voices of Recovery and also the Recovery Advocacy Project. And you can register by going to uh, recoveryvoices.com backslash rally. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I think it's pretty clear why this is important uh, and how this fits into what we're trying to do, right? To uh, empower people and communities. We want people to, to uh, exercise all the po personal power that they can. Thank you so much for, for uh, chatting with me today. And let's remind everyone, get out and vote. Mm -hmm.